Many around the world are going to witness the longest total lunar eclipse of the century. At the same time, Mars will be its closest to Earth in 15 years. Joining us now from Philadelphia with more on this incredible event is Derek Pitts. He is the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Derek, thank you so much for joining us. Um, what exactly is a lunar eclipse and what makes this one different than the others? A lunar eclipse is a, a, an event in which the moon in its orbit around the Earth happens to fall into a position on the opposite side of the Earth where the shadow of the Earth falls onto the surface of the moon. So in that particular situation, when an observer goes out to look, what they'll see is that the moon appears to get darker and darker and darker, typically a reddish color or a brownish color, and that takes place over a number of hours, and they can watch the entire process as the moon moves through the shadow of the Earth. Now that's always a great thing to see in the evening sky. The reason why this one is so long is because the orbital geometry of the moon and the Earth's position around the sun at this time of the year will push the moon through the Earth's atmosphere, through the deepest portion of the shadow, giving us a chance to see a very, very long totality, as it's called, that period when the moon is entirely within the Earth's shadow. So typically, a, a, a lunar eclipse totality, the average time for that is about 51 minutes. In this case, it's an hour and 43 minutes long. So people get a nice long time to sort of enjoy the, seeing the, moon, the Earth's shadow covering the surface of the moon, and they get to see that deep, rich red color. So what path, Derek, will the blood moon lunar eclipse take? So for this particular one, this is going to be seen over uh, Europe, over Africa, and over Western Asia. So for those of us in this part of the world, the eclipse is going to be taking place at midday and in the afternoon. The sky is still bright, of course, and the, the moon is actually below the horizon for us. It won't be rising until later this evening, but by the time it rises for us, the eclipse will be over. So if you're in Europe, or if you're in, uh, in Western Asia, or if you're in Africa, you'll be able to see the entire eclipse. Now for us, we'll have to wait for a while until the next eclipse is available for us, the next lunar eclipse is available for us. That comes up in January, on Sunday, January 20th. And the good thing is, we'll be in a perfect position to see all of that lunar eclipse. And so, hopefully, weather conditions uh, notwithstanding, it should look great. When you look at the pictures, you can see how, um, you know, maybe ancient people would have come up with stories to explain this, because it looks so sort of foreboding. Um, you don't need any special contraptions or anything to see this, right? You can see this with the naked eye? If you're in the right One place the great... at the right time? Exactly. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about this is that all you have to do is go outside and look up and you can view it. And as far as ancient observers are concerned with this, they were used to seeing the moon looking the way it normally looks. A nice bright white color, they'll observe the phases and things like that. So they're used to that. But every once in a while, this lunar eclipse event would take place. And of course it would frighten them because it was way out of the ordinary. Yeah, and so... It doesn't I, help that it's called the blood moon. The blood moon. I can, I can imagine uh, pr well, proto-humans you know, freaking thing about out. The, the interesting thing about the blood moon idea is that's really a very, very recent kind of a, a sort of attachment or moniker that's been given to it, and it really was more of a public relations or a public affairs kind of thing than it was <laughs> anything else, because, you know, the moon's color in eclipses can range anywhere from a tan or coppery color, actually. You, it could even uh, occur in such a way that it just barely has any color at all, but when you get really deep lunar eclipses, like we've had a few of over the last couple of years, a really great way to promote that is if you attach the moniker onto it that it's a blood ring. <laughs> and that really engages people to go out and see it. Uh, so when can we expect another one like this? For us, coming up January 20th. January 20th, it's a Sunday, uh, next year, 2019. All right, mark our calendars. Mark our calendars. Also, mark your calendar. We might have you back, Derek. Yeah, we definitely will have <laughs> you back you. to talk about this. And of course, don't forget, Derek says you have to live in a certain part of the world to see the blood moon. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Because you'll be able to see it right here on CBSN. We will have live coverage of the lunar eclipse beginning at 1.14 p.m. Eastern Time. So wherever you are, you could be in Central Park, you can be anywhere in this country or in some parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Pick up your phone. Start streaming. Get the app and start streaming the lunar eclipse.